Hello again. Welcome back. Here we are back together again. Just you and me. You and me together. Together to the end of the world, to the end of the earth, I will take you. Hold my hand. Take my hand. And we'll walk together through the dark forest of the English language. And I'll protect you against all the evil spirits that try to keep you from improving your English. So, what are we going to do today? I don't really know. What do you feel like doing? What do you feel like doing? What do you feel like doing? Do you feel like uh, talking about the conditional? Bah, no, it's boring. Do you feel like talking about the passive voice? Let's be passive, not active. Seamos pasivos hoy. Let's be passive and not active. But I prefer the active voice. I prefer the active voice. So, let's see. Or we can talk about... The uh, present perfect? Yes. I like things that are perfect, like the past perfect, the future perfect, and the present perfect. I like perfect things. That's boring, talking about the present perfect. Let's see. We can talk about biology. Don't know much about history. Don't know much biology. But I do know that I want to teach you. Okay. So, what can we do? Astronomy? The universe. Wow. The universe is universal. The universe never ends. It's infinite, they say. There are millions and millions and billions of stars, billions of galaxies, not only billions of stars. So, we could talk about that. But the, but the universe is too big. Let's see. We can reduce it to only one galaxy. The Milky Way. Yes, we live in the Milky Way. La Via Láctea. We say la, el camino lechoso, no? the Milky Way. Uh, the Milky Way. We live in the Milky Way in an area of the Milky Way that we call the solar system. El sistema solar. The solar system. We live in the solar system. And the solar system consists of planets, asteroids, an occasional comet or meteorite that passes through, and the sun. The sun. Yes, sir. So, we can talk about a little bit about the solar system. And don't worry, I'm not going to ask you questions. Well, yes, but I'll answer the questions myself because this is not totally interactive. You can ask me questions writing them, but uh, we'll talk about the solar system. There are eight planets in the solar system. Yes, sir. There used to be nine. There used to be nine, used to be, used to, used to, used to, used to, antes había nueve. Yes. But about 15 or 20 years ago, the experts, the astronomers and astrophysicists said, Pluto isn't a planet anymore. So, but before, when I was growing up, there were nine planets. And my primary school teachers taught me that there are nine planets in the solar system. And what my primary school teachers teach, I believe. I mean, everything I learned in life, basically I learned in primary school. So, I'm going to talk about the solar system and answer your questions. However, if you have too many questions, I won't be able to finish the subject or even enter the subject of the solar system. So, already we have people from Sonora and Hermosilla in Mexico. Mexico lindo de la Sierra Morena. All right. Hello, Richard. I am from Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico. I need to know if you have any plans to expand your English method. Right now, we have 10 or 15 books circulating in Mexico. You go to Sanborns or to any of the major bookstores and you can find books from Baugan. For the moment, physically, we're not in Mexico yet. It's very expensive and very complicated to go to... Uh, uh, but you can go to Sanborns and you ask for Vaughan, Inglés Gramática Fácil Vaughan, or Inglés para Mexicanos. If you say Inglés para Mexicanos, Editorial Colofón, Colofón, presto. They will bring, they will get it for you, and it's an excellent book. It's an excellent book. Also, the translation booklet. Uh, we have a complete, we have about 10 or 15 titles currently available in Mexico through Editorial Colofón, which distributes to Sanborns and to other bookshops and bookstores similar to Sanborns. So, in Hermosillo, good luck. All right. And um, 
Si quieres puedes. That's that's a book written by me in Spanish. It's a very good book. But they can, I'm sure they can order for you. Or you can order from Colofón. If you look up Colofón, you can find perhaps the email address and you can write to Colofón directly. Como suena, Colofón, con F, Colofón. Lola, Lola Diaz. Hello, Lola, I'm your student online. I'm trying to get to C1, C2. <coughs> There's only one objective, C2. C1 is good, is a preliminary objective. But you need to reach a C2, which is a total mastery of the language. Total mastery. Well, mastery of the language, no. Mastery of communication situations in the language. All right. And Alejandro, Alejandro Esteban. Uh, tengo un nivel A1. Uf, quiero mejorar. A1 is a low level. Alejandro, you need to make a strong effort because you have a long road ahead of you. Camino largo por delante. However, it's a very interesting, stimulating road that will help you in many ways to go. Learning a language is a good is a good exercise for your brain. So, so adelante, Alejandro, do your best. Okay, so let's get back to the solar system. When I was in elementary school or primary school in Houston, Texas. My teachers taught me that there were nine planets in the solar system. Mercury, Venus, the Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and finally, Pluto. Like Mickey Mouse's dog, Pluto. Of course, in Spanish, say Pluton. Uh, we don't. We say Pluto. The same as Mickey Mouse's dog. And and so, but then, as I said, about 15 or 20 years ago, uh, the astronomers decided that Pluto didn't deserve to be a planet. Pluto didn't deserve. No se merecía ser planeta. It's too small. It used to be the smallest planet in the solar system, but it's not anymore. It used to be, antes era, it used to be, Antes había nueve, ahora hay ocho planetas. There used to be. Se escribe used to. Se pronuncia used to. Used to. There used to be nine planets. Now there are only seven, uh, eight. And so Pluto used to be a planet, but it's not considered a planet anymore. So we have eight planets. Which planet is the closest to the sun and which planet is the farthest from the sun? Which planet is the biggest and which planet is the smallest? Which planet is the hottest? Which planet is the coldest? Which planet takes more time to go around the sun and which planet takes next less time to go around the sun? Which planet is named after the king of the gods? Which planet is named after the... Um, the king of the underworld. Which planet is named after the Roman god for beauty or the Roman goddess for beauty? All right. Well, we'll go over all of this. So I'm looking at some of the questions. So the closest planet to the sun is Mercury. Notice the pronunciation. Mercure, cure, Mercury. No digan Mercury, Mer Mercury, Mercury, como Mercurio, Mercure, cure, cure, una cura, una cura, de curar, cure, Mercury, 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 Mercury is the smallest planet in the solar system since Pluto has been removed. Mercury used to be the second smallest planet in the solar system, but it's not the second smallest anymore. Now it's the smallest because of the elimination of Pluto. So Mercury is the smallest planet in the solar system. It's the closest planet to the sun. It's the planet that takes the least time to orbit the sun or to go around the sun. I think 57 days or something. And you would think, uno pensaría, you would think that Mercury is the hottest planet in the solar system because it's the closest planet to the sun. But it's not the hottest. According to the experts, Venus is hotter than Mercury because Venus has a strange atmosphere that 
con that condenses and holds in the heat. Maybe it's true. I wonder, me pregunto a veces, I wonder how the uh, experts know these things, okay? But nevertheless, planet, uh, planet, Mercury is the smallest planet. It's the closest planet to the sun. It's the planet that needs the least time, el, el menos tiempo, el menor tiempo, to go around the sun or to orbit the sun. And so it's the first planet in the solar system in proximity to the sun, in proximity to the sun. And, uh, and Mercury is named after, Mercury is named after the Roman god of the Roman messenger god, mensajero, Mercury, cuyo nombre en la mitología griega, griega no romana, whose name in Greek mythology is Hermes, Hermes, Hermes. So Mercury is named after the Roman god of messengers, whose name in Greek mythology is Hermes. Now, what planet comes after? What planet comes after? What planet comes after Mercury? Does the Earth come after Mercury? Immediately after, no, it doesn't. Does Saturn come immediately after Mercury? No, it doesn't. What planet comes immediately after Mercury? Venus, Venus, Venus. Is Venus bigger or smaller than Mercury? Venus is bigger than Mercury. Is Venus bigger or smaller than the Earth? I think the Earth is about 1% bigger than Venus. Or vice versa. Vice versa. Vice versa. Vice versa. Va que suene la V en inglés. Vai al decir esto. Vice versa. Vice versa. Versa. <laughs> vice versa. But I think the Earth is about 1 or 2% bigger than Venus. But it could be the opposite, because I'm not an astronomer, and I'm not an expert necessarily on the solar system. But Venus is the second planet in distance from the sun. Venus is farther from the sun than Mercury. Mercury is closer to the sun than Venus, which means Venus isn't as close to the sun as Mercury. Here we're playing with comparatives. Venus isn't as close to the sun as Mercury. Mercury isn't as far from the sun as Venus. So here we have four ways of saying the same thing. Mercury is closer to the sun than Venus. Or Mer and Venus is farther from the sun than Mercury. Venus isn't as close to the sun Venus isn't as close to the sun as Mercury, and Mercury isn't as far from the sun as Venus. So four ways of saying basically the same thing, same idea that Venus comes after Mercury, and Mercury comes before Venus in terms of proximity to the sun. All right. Now, Venus is also named after a Roman goddess. Well, god or goddess. Mercury is named after the messenger god, and Venus, of course, is named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty, Venus. And Venus's name in uh, Greek mythology is Aphrodite. I like that. I prefer the Greek name. Venus is a pretty name, you know. But if I if I'm the if I want to be the goddess of love, and I would prefer to be called Aphrodite. And to tell you the truth. I prefer the name in Spanish. I like it more, Afrodita. I think it sounds sexy, Afrodita. It sounds very erotic. All right, but Venus, 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 Venus. I prefer Venus in English and Venus in Spanish, because people in Spanish say Venus, casi como una B, Venus. It just doesn't sound very erotic or very love loving to me, or beauty, beautiful. But uh, Aphrodite, yes, and especially in Spanish, Afrodita. So the second. <laughs> the second planet in the solar system, the planet which comes after Mercury, not before Mercury, and which is the second closest planet to the sun, is named after the Roman goddess of beauty and love, whose name, cuyo nombre, whose name in Greek mythology is Aphrodite, whose translation into Spanish is Aphrodita. All right, now Venus needs more time to go around the sun than Mercury. Why? 
because Venus is farther from the sun than Mercury. If Venus were closer to the sun, it would need fewer days, fewer days to go around the sun than Mercury. But because Venus is farther from the sun than Mercury, Venus needs more days to orbit the sun or to go around the sun than Mercury. So, and so Venus comes after Mercury. Venus is the second, uh, the second planet in the solar system in terms of proximity to the sun. And Venus is about the same size. It's about the same size. Nando, I have, a, I have, a, I have several new I have several new messages. One from Ramon. Ramon, Ranth Ramon. Thank you very much for listening. He says, hi, Richard. Many thanks for so many years of English classes. God, I'm getting old. Huh? You know, so many years. You know how many years? 45 years. It's been a long time. Yes, sir. And I'm going to continue teaching until the day I fall dead, probably. I'll die with my boots on. Bueno, pensando bien, on second thought, y los británicos dicen on second thoughts. So I'm posing that. On second thought, I think I'll take my boots off before. Yeah. But in any case, I'll continue teaching Ramon until the day I die. Elena Conache, como, como Elena de Troya. Are you a bit of, she's not, the person who's writing is not Elena de Troya, it's Elena de Sande. Wow. Nunca está en Sande. Está en Troya, pero no en Sande. Tú eres la famosa Elena de Sande. All right. So, hi, Richard. Love your classes. And I love having you as well. All right. Nando. Nando Lozano. Nando. Será Fernando, I suppose. Excelente profesor. Thank you very much. Excelente. Uh, good person. No me conoces bien, eh? You don't know me very well. I have a dark side. Yeah. Would you like to come to the dark side? Well, maybe Elena. You can come to the dark side. You have to be careful with me. Excelente persona. Thank you. Excelente programa. Todo lo relativo a Bauen es un verdadero lujo. Bueno, tiempo acostado y una caña, como dicen en España. Con tiempo y una caña. It takes time, but thank you very much for watching. Let's get back to the solar system because we, we, we're only with Venus. There are eight or perhaps nine planets in the solar system, and I'm still on the second. We're using comparative and superlative. Venus is bigger than Mercury. Mercury is smaller than Venus. Venus isn't as small as Mercury, and Mercury isn't as big as Venus. Venus is farther from the sun than Mercury, and Mercury is closer to the sun than Venus, which means Mercury isn't as far from the sun as Venus, and which means that Venus isn't as close to the sun as Mercury, and Mercury takes fewer days to orbit the sun. Venus takes more days to orbit the sun. So, Venus doesn't orbit the sun as quickly as Mercury does. And Mercury doesn't orbit the sun as slowly as well. I'm getting, this is, this is getting complicated. But do you understand? Now, what planet comes after Venus? Venus. The Earth. Your planet and my planet. I, I'm speaking to you from the Earth, by the way. Are you listening to me from the Earth or from Mars or from some planet we don't know? But nevertheless, I'm speaking to you from the Earth. My address, my address is Felipe Street, Madrid, Spain, Europe, Northern Hemisphere, the world, solar system, Milky Way, universe. That's my complete address, okay? But I think you can, if you want to write to me, you don't need to talk about solar system, etc. It will reach me. But nevertheless, I want to say thank you. We have more people writing in. Hay una sucursal de Bauen en Vigo. ¿Pudieras estar ahí? Creo que está cerca. Well, ¿pudieras yo estudiar ahí? O tú. You can go there. It's an excellent place in Vigo. Yeah. If you haven't visited our Vigo office, my God, Francisco. Francisco Javier, please go and pay us a visit, just to say hello. Maybe you can buy a book or something. Uh, mi hermano fue en enero de 16, Lugo, España, a estudiar seis meses. Yo me enamoré del método Vaughan. Thank you. I fell in love with the Vaughan method. Y ella me trajo los libros físicamente. Y en Navidad, me, me regalé el libro. Tu profesor en casa avanza. Me regaló, será. Y se lo pedí a Amazon. Tardó una semana en llegar. Okay, well... 
Continue, continue studying Francisco Javier. Continue making an effort. And uh, if you live in Vigo, I'm not sure if you live in Lugo or in Vigo. But in any case, if you live in Vigo, go. Pay us a visit. All right. Okay. The third planet in the solar system is the Earth. Fijaos, the Earth. Yo digo the. No, the. The cup, the table, the jacket, the watch. Digo the. If the word starts with a consonant sound, if the word starts with a vowel sound, the, the oven, the apple, the airport, the earth. And I say a vowel sound because the word honest or the word honor, honesto, honor, honorable, empiezan por H, consonante, pero la H muda. Entonces empieza por sonido de vocal. Or, or, for example, the European Parliament, el Parlamento Europeo. Claro, empieza por la letra E. The, European, sí, sin embargo, es sonido de U larga. You, European, European, European. In fact, European sounds exactly the same as tú eres un peón. You are a peon, European, European. It sounds the same. It's like euthanasia, la eutanasia. The first time I heard the expression euthanasia, I thought they were talking about the young people who live in Asia. What do you mean? They're talking about the problem with the youth in Asia or the young people having problems. La juventud de Asia, en Asia, youth in Asia, dicho de corrido, son igual de que la autonasia. Es idéntico, euthanasia. I'm in favor of euthanasia for the euthanasia. Okay. And European, European. All right. European. So, Europe. A European problem. A, uh, no an. Aunque empiece por e, it's a, uh, a European question, and the European Parliament. All right, more questions. Ah, oh, el método es único. Thank you very much. Lola, Lola, la, 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 Lola. Yes, I have a platonic love here in Madrid by the name of Lola, and I can't get her out of my mind. I can't stop thinking about her day and night, night and day, day after day, día tras día, day after day, día y noche, day and night, night and day. I never stop thinking about Lola. She's my platonic love, and I will never probably gain, win her love. She doesn't even know. I watch her from afar. I observe her and things, and I have my little secret I keep, and Lola doesn't know. Lola. Lola usually comes from Dolores. Okay, maybe your name, Lola, is Maria Dolores. Maybe. Uh, but thank you very much for the compliment. The cumplido, the compliment. Lola, I take classes online. They're great. Great. Okay, you have to pronounce it correctly. Great. Son geniales. That's classes. Thank you very much. All right. The Earth. The Earth is the third planet on the solar, in the solar system. It comes after Venus. And it comes before Mars. It's located between Venus and Mars. It's the third planet in the solar system. It's farther, farther. Más lejos, farther. También existe la palabra further. You can say it's further from the sun is also correct. However, I recommend, although this is not a rule, it's a general recommendation, I recommend that you use farther for physical distance of más, más lejos. The Earth is farther from the Sun than, than Venus, for example. I never went further in figurative ways. No quiero entrar más en esta discusión. I don't want to go further into this subject. I don't want to go for any further. Any further. In this case, it's not physical distance, but it means no quiero adentrarme más distancia dentro del tema, de, de este tema de debate, for example. I don't want to go further, further. Uh, but in this case, further, I think, is always correct. It's interesting. Farther, we don't use figuratively. We don't say, I don't want to go into this subject any farther. No. No quiero entrar más en este tema. I don't want to go into this. I don't want to go into this subject any further. I have no further comment. No tengo más comentario más allá de lo que he comentado yo. I have no further comment. All right. More questions, more questions. All of your questions, all, you people are interrupting me constantly. 
How am I supposed to teach the solar system if you're interrupting me? Will. Will Giraldo. Hello, Mr. Vaughn, Senor Vaughan. I... No, ah, they're changing my screen. I just want to say thanks for all your support and effort to help us. I've been learning English alone for two years by myself and, of course, all your magnificent team. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much, Will. Quite, one thing here. I, I I recommend, for people who are learning English, I recommend the expression, thank you, and not thanks. Thanks is perfect. But you need to have a native skill with the language to use it with the right intonation and with the right impact. Thank you is always perfect. So, for, for, thank, you say thanks. And a second thing, I recommend thank you very much. Si dices muchas gracias, muchas gracias hay dos formas. Thank you very much and thanks a lot. I recommend thank you very much. And don't use thanks a lot unless you're practically a native speaker. Because we use thanks a lot for a sarcastic thank you. Muchas gracias, macho. Vaya faena que me has hecho. Yeah, with you, with friends like you, I don't need enemies. Thanks a lot. So be very careful with thanks a lot, because if your intonation is not good, people can understand it ironically or sarcastically. Thank you very much is always very positive. Thanks a lot. Misunderstood could be negative. And it's impossible to misunderstand thank you very much, because it's always positive. And when you say gracias, I recommend thank you. Thank you. Because thanks sometimes is used para cubrir expediente. Ah, thanks. Thanks. Means ah, para expedir el tema. Boom. Thanks. But thank you is sinceridad siempre. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Will. <laughs> All right. All right. Cristian. Cristian Solari. Uh, hello, Richard from Buenos Aires. Mi signatura, asignatura pendiente. Before I die, I'm going to visit your city. And of course, Misiones in Cordoba and Mendoza and Tucumán and Salta and Rosario and all the other places in the, in the Patagonia, of course, there are many, many places to visit in Buenos, in Buenos Aires, in Argentina and to drink good Malbec red wine, one of my favorites. Okay, so thank you very much. Okay, getting back. Cuando se dice, volviendo al tema de se dice getting, not going back. To go back is regresar yendo, but to get back is llegando de, de regreso al tema. Getting back. To get is llegar. To get. Pero hay que mencionar el destino. To get sin destino no es no, llegar. Es conseguir, obtener, to get. Now, to get home, to get to Barcelona, to get to Buenos Aires, to get to work. That's it. When you, when you mention the destination, get is 95% of the time. Or 99% of the time we... When I got here, cuando llegué aquí, cuando llegué aquí esta mañana, cuando llegué esta mañana, se dice en español, cuando llegué esta mañana, Juanita me saludó. Fine. But in English, solemos decir, when I got here this morning, not when I arrived. It's correct. When I arrived. Or when I arrived here. Suena casi forzado de arrive here. Use the verb to arrive when you don't mention the destination. Cuando llegamos... Nos llamaron. When we arrived, they called us. When we got to Paris, they called us. Si menciones el destino, con get. Ahora bien, curiosamente en inglés, casi siempre mencionamos el destino a propósito para usar get en vez de arrive. When I got here. Cuando llegué esta mañana, me tomé un café. Yeah. When I arrived this morning, I had a coffee. When I got here this morning, I had a coffee. We use get 99% of the time. So we use the destination. We force the destination night in, in most cases. Ju Julie, Julie. Julio, Julia. Será Julia. Julie or July? Uh, Chamorro. El mejor sistema de inglés. Gracias por vuestro trabajo. Ah, you must be Spanish. Con vuestro. We have a lot of listeners from Latin America. And so uh, the uh, it means when they say vuestro, then it means you're probably from Spain. Thank you very much, Julie. Or Julie, or July. Jesus, you're the best teaching English. You're the best? Okay. You're the best English teacher, or you're the best at teaching English. I understand you. You're the best at teaching English. Eres el mejor enseñando inglés. Claro. 
We put at in the middle. You're the best at teaching English. Jesus, thank you very much. Don Jesus. Y Lola. Lola Troya. Come on. I, I sang to you before. Get it, boss. You want more. Any plan to offer new courses online? You know, Lola, the English language doesn't change every five years. And how to teach English doesn't change. The irregular verbs don't have an expiration date. And the regular verbs will never expire. I mean, the verb to get, to go, to do, to like, will continue in, five, in 100 years. So a new course online is simply a, a new approach to teach the same thing. And our approach is very good. It's very, maybe we can tweak it a little. To tweak means make small improvements. Como tweet, de Twitter, pero tweak, tweak, with a K at the end. That means make little changes, little small modifications, maybe to improve it. But a different course, yes, in the future, in fact, right now, we're designing a course, but it's a long process. So, but with the course you have, just review and review and review and you review the same. Or go onto the internet and listen to 100 interviews in English per week. One interview with Donald Trump, another interview with Barack Obama, another interview with, I don't know, Paul McCartney, another interview with Keith Richard, another interview with Elton John in English, and just keep your ear. You don't need our method. You need your effort and your time. The secret for your English is your time and your effort with a good focus. And the Vaughn method is a good focus, but there are other focuses. Listening comprehension is everything. Develop that. All right. All right, Francisco Javier, past simple for everything in Latin American Spanish. I don't know if in Spain they use the past simple or past perfect. No, excuse me. The past simple, como pretérito indefinido. Fui, comí, llegué, uh, trabajé. That's the past simple in, in Spanish. And here in Spain, they use it. Yes, a lot. But they have a tendency in Spain to use the pre, what, what is called in Spanish pretérito perfecto. He comido, he ido, he llegado, he dormido, etc. More than in Latin America. For example, right now, it's 12.30. Midday. Midday. 12.30. Now, in Mexico or Argentina, probably, peoples will say, ah, que mal dormí anoche. Que mal dur dormí anoche. Fine. And in English, too. I s didn't sleep well last night. So, let's say it in No dormí bien. I didn't sleep well last night. Or I didn't get much sleep last night. Simple past, like in Latin America. But here in Spain, even now, at 12.30 midday, Spanish people can say, Ay, que mal he dormido esta, esta noche. Entendiendo que esa noche. Hace unas horas. That's Castilian Spanish. But they use the simple past all the time. They use the simple past all the time. Cervantes vivió en el siglo XVI y XVII. Shakespeare escribió muchas obras de teatro. Yes, Shakespeare wrote. They don't say Shakespeare ha escrito. Because Shakespeare died 400 years ago. Okay. So, more or less. David, David Andres, I need the, to kit the book with my English. I don't completely understand your sentence. I need to kick, kit. What is to kit? Kit is, um, kit is a type of box with things in it. Yes. I need to kit the book with my English. And English is... Uh, I need to hit the book. Ah, hit como pegar los libros. We say... To start, that means to study. English is with a capital E. Spanish is with a capital E. The days of the week, the months of the year, and the countries and the adjectives. The English people live in England. The Spanish people live in Spain. English and Spanish always with a capital. This is important. Always use capital letters with with the adjectives, Espanol, Inglés, Mexicano, Americano, Chino, Chinese, always with a capital letter. All right. Uh, Francis, well, the same people are writing me all the time. Come on. I'm not going to answer the same people all the time. Yo me regalé el libro. Me lo regalé a mí mismo. 
me he regalado el libro. Sonaría raro para un mexicano hablar así. Bueno, it depends. It depends. Uh, ayer, la semana pasada, me regalé el libro. I, I bought the book for myself. I bought the book for myself last week, last year, last month. But if the book is in front of me, and even if I bought it yesterday, ah, no, mira, ah, Pepe, pa, pa, Paco, mira, mira este libro, me, me he regalado un libro. Oh, sí, sí, me he regalado, que conste, me he regalado un libro. Sí, y cuando te lo regalaste, ayer. Okay, it's in English, we'd, we'd say, um, I have bought, I have bought a new novel. Me he comprado un nuevo, una nueva novela. I've bought a new novel. Really, Richard? What novel? Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Oh, wow. When did you buy it? Y ya pasó al pasado simple. Sin embargo, en inglés, sobre todo en inglés americano, se suele ir al, como en Latinoamérica, al pasado simple siempre. En vez de decir, pues me he comprado una novela nueva. Que conste. All right. Los británicos podrían decir más a menudo, I've bought a new book. I've bought a new novel. Americans probably would go straight to the past. I bought a new novel. But a purist, un, grama, un gramático, a grammarian would say, me he comprado una nueva, una nueva novela. Ah, sí. ¿Cuándo, lo compra, ¿Cuándo la compraste? Okay. Playing with both. I've bought, I've bought a new book. Really? When did you buy it? I bought it last week. All right. But don't worry about these things. This is splitting hairs. Claro, split a hair. To split is partir en dos, is to divide. Dividamos el dinero. La mitad para mí, la mitad para ti. Let's split the money. Let's divide the money. Or divide up the money. Let's split the money. But to take a hair, boop, and with a very sharp knife, partir en la mitad. El cabello que has sacado. That's to split hairs. That means, don't worry about things. It's rizar a rizo. Do you understand? To curl the curl. <laughs> rizar a rizo means, don't worry about these fine points. Just speak. Don't worry. All right. Francis Javier. Lola, en español de España sonaría bien. El español de España sonaría bien. Lola. <laughs> I suppose so. I like Castilian Spanish, but I like Mexican Spanish, Peruvian. I like, I like the Spanish everywhere. Everywhere I've gone, I like the way they speak. As long as it's spoken clearly, good resolution, cultivated way, it's beautiful everywhere. All right. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm following your logic, Lola. But in any case, let's get back to the uh, solar system. And maybe my cohort or my friend, I, there's somebody sitting over there, right? you can't see him, but he's trying to figure out the logic of some of your comments while I'm thinking about the solar system. How can I, you know, this is what you call multitasking, hacer multitarea. Multitasking is for women who are more intelligent. We men, we cannot, we don't know how to multitask. I can't teach English, talk about the solar system and read and comment on your Comments, valga redundante a comentar sobre vuestros comentarios. Let's see. Let's see. Higher level online course. Ah, oh, you need a higher level online course. No, you don't. No, you don't. Lola. 90% of everything we say in any language is basic. Basic. Higher level things constitute only 10% of what we say. For example, uh, si me hubieras llamado ayer, podría haberlo hecho para hoy. O sea, lo, lo podría haber terminado para hoy. Es el condicional. How many times per month do you say a sentence like that? Probably once a month. Now, the expression hay que es vamos a Cuando vas a es, son, está, están, we say three or four times per minute. You must consolidate absolute agility with the basic elements of the structure of the language. Elements that you already know perfectly in theory. 
but you need to activate them boom, 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 perfectly. If you need to go to a higher level, you can't find the best, the most effective way is to go into the web, to go into the internet and watch all kinds of interviews in English, all kinds of different inputs that the course, did. I can teach you the conditionals. I can teach you phrasal verbs. How can I make it up to you? Como te lo puedo compensar, enmendar. How can I make it up to you? How can I make up for it? Uh, don't let on that uh, that I that I let him go. So, no, no, hagas entender a los demás que le he despedido. Don't let on that I've let him go. That's very high level English. Very high level English, but we say it once a month. Where people have trouble, when people are not fluent or effective with the English language, it's for two reasons. Number one, they're not understanding perfectly. And number two, the basic grammar is enredándoles, is tangling them up, tying them up. And they speak English like a defo with a, uh, with a cojera, a deformity. Many people have, their English is what they call in Spain, macarrónico. And so we have to they, they imagine you're in a traffic accident and you six of your bones are broken and you don't go to the hospital. And so the bones set like this. And that's how people speak English. I mean, I can walk. I can walk like this. It's not very efficient. If I need to go to the door, I can go to the door. It takes me maybe uh, 20 seconds to go to the door when normally it takes me five but I reached the door. So what we need to do is to re-break re -break these bones, reset them, and rehabilitate so that you can go to the door in five seconds and not 20. It's the basic motor skills. Las habilidades básicas motrices. Los que diferencian los que tienen soltura con el inglés y los que no tienen soltura. Nadie, nadie mejora su inglés yendo a la estratosfera de mi idioma, tratando de entender estas cosas. Un malabarista con tres pelotas mantenidas en el aire bien nos puede deslumbrar. No hace falta 17 donde se te cae la mitad. So, simplicity. The advanced English. Ugh. Our online program covers everything you need for speaking. For speaking. It covers everything you need. Of course, if you want to be able to say, estoy ensimismado hoy. Uh, or you want to say, um, no por mucho madrugar, amanecerá más temprano, or something. Well, of course, if we want to go into re to proverbs, sayings, special expressions, no mal que, que por bien no venga. I mean, we can go into these things, but it's not going to help you with your English. It's va a añadir, va a añadir lastre. Y más pelotas que tienes, o crees que tienes que mantener el aire. So remember, you can go around the world negotiating contracts with only three balls. A juggler. A juggler is a person malabarista. And juggling is a juegos malabares. Juggling. And jugglers can, can, with three balls, can get, can negotiate million dollar contracts successfully speaking. So you don't need 17 balls. But people think, I need to progress. Dame pelota numero cuatro. Pelota numero cinco. And finally, a bruma. Y te mira la moral y la confianza. Y, y al final es contra, hasta contraproducente. Añadir más gramática, más gramática, más gramática. Hay que tener un dominio brutal de la base, de la base, de los cimientos, para construir ese, 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 ese rascacielos con tu inglés. Cimentación, cimentación, cimentación. Eso primero, always. And most people don't have that. And then, of course, oído, que es más importante todavía. So, Esther, hello, Esther. Welcome. She has no she has no comment, but that's okay, Esther. Just to know you're here, Esther. All right, Ivan. Uh, would you like to be my grandpa or my boss? Neither. <laughs> Greetings from Colombia. You are the best English English sin apostrophe. You're the best English teacher ever. All an inspiration. Uh, all an inspiration. No, an inspiration. Keep us at all. It quita la apostrophe se tambi de English. Uh, I would like to be your, I think I would like to be your son, not your grandfather. I think that means I'm younger. And I don't want to be your boss. 
It depends on how well you work. If you're an effective worker and you get things done, of course I would like to be your boss because the boss, the dream of a boss is to have good subordinates who get things done. I want somebody who knows how to get things done. Ivan, do you know how to get things done? It's very, this is interesting. This expression, to get things done is extremely common in English and there's not an exact equivalent in Spanish. Hacer las cosas, fine, that's to do things. But to get things done means hacer que se, si llegan a buen término, que, que se cumplan, que se resuelvan las cosas con éxito. Buenos desenlaces, que me traen hechos consumados uh, de mi agrado. That's to get things done. I need to find people who know how to get things done, which means people who are self-reliant. Lo cual significa, which means people who are self-reliant. Self-reliant means you get things done without coming to me for help. You use your own resources. You are a resourceful person. Una persona que sabe ingeniárselas para resolver los temas sin apelar a otros. That's a person who is self-reliant. To rely on is confiar in. Autoconfiante, literalmente en inglés, um, means self-reliant, means you rely on yourself. You need to improve your English, or I need to improve my Spanish, or my French, I'll do it myself. And I will not ask that person to, hey, Rob, can you help me with my French? It's my problem. I don't want to include him, so I'm a self-reliant person. Victor, Victor Vic, Gracias por la clase, Richard. It's a pleasure. Don't mention it. Not at all. You're welcome. You bet. All right. Silvia, con Y. All right. In Malaga, need a good English academy. Maybe in the future, Silvia. Maybe in the future. There's a teacher here in this company that is a real pain in the posterior. She's a pain in the neck. Es una pesadita. We say un dolor en la nuca o en el cuello. A pain in the neck or a pain in the ass. All right. She's a good girl, but she wants to move to Malaga. And for the past two years, she has been bugging me, which means bothering me, bugging me day in and day out. When are we going to open in Malaga? I said, don't worry, Sharina. Someday, someday. <sighs> El que mucho abarca poca prieta. Okay. I don't want to stretch my resources too thin. Do you understand? Thin is fino. Lo contrario de espe espeso o grueso. Fino. Me extender mis recursos tanto que no, no, no aprieto. Uh, so you understand. To spread, and it's incorrect English, but it's an expression. Because we should say to spread our resources too thinly. It's an adverb. But we said I want to spread my resources. Extender mis recursos Así se que se diluyan demasiado, diluting my resources. And if I open in Malaga, because we just opened in Alicante, but Malaga's on the map. There's a map of the world in my office. And I have darts, dardos. And with Rob over here, I say, okay, Rob, Alicante, bum. And then I, get a, I, I moisten the tip of the dart. Lima, Lima, Peru. Maybe Malaga. Where's Malaga? Whew. And so, Sylvia, maybe Malaga in the future. Maybe Malaga in the future. But I don't want to spread my resources too thin or too thinly. Sometimes for poetic license, licencia poetica, we make mistakes in English. For example, Elvis Presley. He said, love me tender, love me true. Never let me go. Do you remember the song? It's totally, there are two big mistakes there. It should be love me tenderly, love me truly. Never let me go. But can you imagine the song? Love me tenderly, love me truly. It loses the impact. So Elvis Presley is a bad influence on my English, Rob's English, maybe on your English. But he's a very good singer. Love me tender, love me true. Okay, Yolanda. Yes, I believe I know who's hiding in the wings. Yeah, Rob. Well, I think Yolanda knows. I think she knows every nook and cranny of this place by now. Every nook and cranny means cala recoveco, cala esquinita, cala rincón. Yes. Welcome, Yolanda. It's good to have you watching.
All right, from Cantabria. Uh, Sylvia again, you make it easier. Please open a Vaughn Town in Malaga. Oh, Vaughn Town? Well, <sighs> Vaughn Town is the best English improvement program in the world. But it requires 15 clients at the same time. 15 students simultaneously paying an important amount of money. And so to bring in Andalusia 15 people together for one week is not easy. That's why we work close to Madrid, because Madrid is a very, very big market. Madrid is probably 10 times greater in dynamic as a dynamic market than Malaga, even though Malaga is a dynamic market. Eh? It's a very good market. And so it's, it's a dangerous wager to do a Vaughn Town in Andalusia. Wager means apuesta. A bet, when you go to the casino, you bet. Or you go to the horse races, you bet. Voy a apostar en las carreras. You bet. But a wager, escrito wager, wager es una apuesta figurada. Apuesto por ti. Estoy apostando por ti. Llegarás a un buen, a buen puerto con el inglés. Estoy apostando por ti. I'm wagering on you. I'm not betting any money. Y es una apuesta importante. Invertir en Perú o invertir en Málaga es una apuesta importante. It's an important wager. All right, Luis. Luis Caro. Hi, Richard. Then the movies and TV series use a higher level of English most of the time. And it, don't watch movies. Don't watch movies or television series. For example, on a scale of 1 to 100 in difficulty, means 1 is super easy, 100 is impossible to understand. On a scale of 1 to 100, your English teacher is difficulty factor 10. 10, which means it's quite easy to understand your English teacher. Me, now, difficulty factor 20 or 15, because I'm speaking quite quickly. Real life, you go to a meeting in New York, in Sydney, Australia, in London, in Glasgow, in Dublin, difficulty factor 40, which means it's four times more difficult to understand in a meeting in London than to understand your English teacher. It's, four, it's 10, 40. Movies, 100. Movies and television series, the difficult factor is 100, which means movies and television series are not a faithful reflection of the true difficulty of understanding. It's two and a half times more difficult, or three times more difficult. And I know, because I have trouble sometimes understanding movies and TV series in my own language. So don't watch them because they will... First of all, a movie, I, told, I, told, I speak about this every week. A movie only lasts, well, a movie lasts two hours, but the people are speaking for only 20 minutes. All the rest of the time is action and transition and camera angles. That's it. So it's not a very efficient use of your time. Second, the script, the director, and the actors infuse infunden, infuse greater impact or greater linguistic creativity than you see in real life. And it's more difficult. My mother had a lot of trouble understanding certain actors. She always complained about Montgomery Clift, about Marlon Brando, about Paul Newman, because they murmured English. Yeah, I think we ought to go down there. I have trouble understanding them too. So watch audio. Well, watch audio. <laughs> Listen to audio or watch video with interviews or speeches. Watch TED Talks. Watch interviews on YouTube. People speaking, people speaking all the time. That's it. All right. Lola, good. I agree. The point now, Lola, finally, I mean, we're having this long conversation with Lola. The point now is at this level is listening and listening to different accents. You must understand perfectly. The only point in which you need to strive for perfection or you need to aspire to perfection is in listening comprehension. Don't be a perfectionist in speaking. It's futile. In English, it's futile, but it's a, it's a waste of your energy, a waste of your time, because you will never speak English 
to your entire satisfaction. But it's imperative to understand perfectly. Because if you don't, you are handicapped. With a in imperfect English, spoken English, it's not you're not handicapped. With imperfect listening, you're handicapped. So, yes, Lola, work on this, on this. Different accents, great. Scottish, English, well, how many there are a thousand different accents in the United Kingdom. Irish, US, South, US, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Boston accent. They're not very different. In the U.S., it's not very different. Canadian accent, to tell you the truth, if I hear a Canadian speaking, I don't know if he's from the U.S. or from Canada until he says about. Then he says about. Then, ha, he's a Canadian, all right? Strange about that pronunciation. And Australia, as well, New Zealand, South Africa, Jamaica, and India. You listen to the people in India. <laughs> they speak like this. All right, but it's being considered a native accent now. <clears throat> so, yes, expose your ear. That's the secret. You don't need to spend a penny, Lola, but you need to. It's expensive in time, but it's not expensive in money. It's free. And time is free, too, depending on your priorities. Next, uh, Robert Francisco says, sensible is sensitive. Como decir que es, eres muy delicado. I'm not very delicate. Delic delicado means indeble, no? Delicate means, okay, I'm very sensitive. Sensible. A las, las, a las, los matices. The nuances. Yes, because it's interesting. It's intellectually stimulating to compare. When should we use this and this? Okay. That's sensitive in English. Of course, sensitive is un falso amigo porque sen sensible, escrito sensible, significa sensato. Sin embargo, el sustantivo, sensibility, is sensibilidad. So it's, English is complicated here. Sensible is sensato. Racional, lógico, sensato, sensible. But sensibility is sens sensibilidad, como en español. And sensitive, like Ruben Darío, our Nicaraguan friend. ¿Cómo era? Dichoso el árbol que es apenas sensitivo. Y más la piedra dura porque ese ya no siente. Yeah, Ruben Darío uh, had a change. He lost two of his children, and he became an alcoholic later in his life. And so his poetry, which at the beginning was lovely about princesses and, and flowers, and, the t and then it moved into more negative, more dramatic type of poetry. It's very, very, very interesting. Sensitive, yes. Roberto Ape. Hi, Richard. I always watch your videos on YouTube. Thank you. I've got a question that I've never been able to figure out. Ah, oh, the, use, the use of sensible and sensitive. Okay. I repeat. Sensible is sensato. Y sensitive is sen, 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 sensible. Lo contrario. Sensato is sensible. Okay. Sensible. Se sensato. Be sensible. Yes. Be sensible. All right. Just remember that. Y el, la palabra española sensible in English is sensitive. Don't be so hypersensitive. No seas tan hipersensible. Don't be so hypersensitive. Every correction you make. I remember one student I had. A man. Well, a young man. He was probably 30 years old. And I was teaching him a private class. And every time I corrected him, he said, Oh! I said, well, take it easy. I said, no, 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 Rafael, Rafael, don't be so hypersensitive. Se autoflagelaba. I mean, he punished himself brutally for every mistake he made. Uh, but in any case, I've had 2,000 students, so I think I've seen everything. All right, Ivan, Ivan Conchas, hi, dear master. No, no te pases, I'm not a master. All right, Master Richard, is it correct the following sentence? It, if you've, no, no, if you've been in my shoes, no. If you had been, sorry, you would have done the same. Si hubiera estado en mi pellejo, en se dice en español, en inglés se dice, si hubiera estado tú en mis zapatos, if you had been, H-A-D, no H-A, no have. Have been is si has estado. Eso si hubieras estado en mis zapatos, habrías hecho lo, lo mismo. If you had been, if you had been, had 
in my shoes, you would have done, you would have done, you would have done, you would have done the same. Thank you in advance. Prefiero thank you a thanks. Eh? And you know, the expression uh, in advance, quita la de, quita la de in advance. Gracias por anticipado. Thank you in it. In avance. No avanzado. In avanzado, no. Thank you in advance. But to tell you the truth, two things. I recommend thank you. Number two, the expression in advance, I've never used. I don't personally like the expression. Thank you in advance. It's simply thank you. <laughs> thank you. You don't need to anticipate the thank you. I right, just say thank you. But many people use it. And uh, I, I personally don't like it. But in any case, that's your decision. Angel, good morning. Morning, Richard Vaughn. Es que con N al final. Vaughn. Y con mayúsculas, por favor. The days of the week, the months of the year, the adjectives for nationality, and my name. Okay. Uh, Richard Vaughn. Let me tell you. Mm, let me tell you. I prefer stay standard English. I like to tell you that you've been. You are, and you'll be. You've been, comma, you are, comma. Well, it, that comma is debatable. And you'll be the best teacher. And all your programs are always followed by me. Oh, no, it's not both passive and key. It's muy, the passive voice is very weak. The active voice. And I always follow your programs. I prefer the active voice. The only time I prefer the passive voice is when you need to be passive. For example, if... Uh, a child is in the zoo and falls into the alligator pit and the alligators eat the child. Mm. My God, poor boy, little boy. And it's my job to go to the parents and to transmit the news about their son. I mean, if I go to their house, uh, <clears throat> uh, I have some bad news. Uh, your child was eaten by an alligator. Okay. In that case, I would probably use the passive voice. I mean, to go and, <clears throat> I'm sorry to tell you this, but an alligator ate your child. The active voice sounds a bit too abrupt, a bit too harsh. Harsh is aspero, agrio, directo, too direct. So I would use the passive voice. But otherwise, the active voice. For example, if a lion comes into this room and surprises me and Rob, I mean, if you're saying suddenly the television studio was interrupted by the presence of a lion, that doesn't have any power. Using the passive voice, suddenly the TV studio was interrupted by a lion. It just, so in this case, the active voice, suddenly a lion burst into the room and surprised everybody. Irrumpió. Burst. Burst is reventar. Burst, como suena. Reventar and said, burst into the room and scared everybody, terrified us. All right. The active voice. I prefer the active voice. So, Ángel. No, ¿dónde estamos? Yes, Ángel David. Ku. ¿Será quesada? Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> yes. And all of you, and I follow all of your programs. Ante la duda, voz activa siempre. ¿Eh? De hecho, la Microsoft a veces en la corrección de estilo al escribir, no solo es spelling, recomienda active voice. All right. Where are we now? Where are we? Oh, David, we finished? Oh, wait. I, I'm a really, really, thank, thanks to you. I'm a, now I'm a really good teacher. Ah, también enseñas, pobrecito, te acompaño el sentimiento. <laughs> thanks, thanks to you. Hope one day to me, I hope to meet you someday or one day and to be part of your crew, the motley crew here at Vaughn. Greetings from Ángel Quiro, Quirola. Quirola, no Quiroga. Quirola, that's an interesting name, Quirola. I've never heard that name. Silvia, here we are again with Silvia. Silvia's La Malagueña, right? Yeah. Mala, you know the song Malagueña? That's Malagueña para Silvia. Anyway, anyway, no, it's in, in any case. Me gusta más in any case. Viste más. I usually go to the book fair, the fair book, or the book fair. The fair book is a libro justo, de justicia. The book fair is a fair libro in Madrid, and I visit your stand. I got a child book about, a children's book about songs. Maybe I remember you, Sylvia. All right, Carmelitas, 
Wow, thank you very much for this nice class. Quita la final la class. Termina en ese. All right, so, my God, what time is it? I was supposed to talk about the solar system today, and it's your fault that I have not been able to finish. I'm still going to continue. I haven't finished yet. Bicho malo nunca muere. They say, in Spanish, they say, a bad, bad bug never dies, right? And so uh, I'm going to continue. But I'm receiving all of these comments or all these questions like Serena. Serena, Serena, que pasa, que eres? La una, las dos, las cuatro, las tres. Las cinco, las seis, las siete, las diez. Serena, Serena, que pasa, que eres? I bet nobody has sung that song to you, Serena. Yeah. Chukin, it's, uh, your surname is either Japanese or Russian. ¿Cuáles son los libros que debo machacar oh, para tener buenos cimientos? Translation booklet. Los libros de traducción inversa de Maugan o ingre, inglés gramática fácil. Son sobre todo translation booklet. Yo he visto más milagros salir de ese libro que de ningún otro. Translation booklet de Maugan. Son siete u ocho mil frases de las más corrientes en español y luego en inglés. Haré lo que pueda. I'll do what I can. ¿Cuándo le vas a llamar? When are you going to call him? ¿Por qué no lo hiciste? Why didn't you do it? En cuanto te, cuando lo tenga, te lo diré. As soon as I have it, I'll tell you. No vengas aquí con esas quejas. Don't come here with those complaints. Siempre te estás quejando. You're always complaining. Sí, ocho mil frases de, de esa utilidad. Es brutal este libro. Translation booklet. Y inglés gramático fácil es lo mismo, pero va por, capi, por cada, cada página un día. And so you can pace yourself. But I recommend first the translation booklet. Y tiene el audio descargable. So you can listen to the sentences in Spanish. ¿Cuándo lo vas a hacer? When are you going to do it? ¿Por qué no, no lo hiciste ayer? Why didn't you do it yesterday? Nunca, nunca he visto uh, un planeta cuadrado. I've never seen a square planet. And it's true. Planets are round. Why? Why are planets round? And the moon is round. The sun is round. All of the celestial bodies seem to be round. I suppose it's gravity that's pulling equally from every on every point, and it just creates round. Do you remember how to? Um, do you remember how to calculate the the area of a circle? How do you say círculo in English? Circle. Circle, sir. Si, sí, señor. Yes, sir. Circle. Circuito. Circuit. Siempre con si, sí, señor. Sir. Circle. Circumnavigate. Circumference. For example, you remember the Knights of the Round Table? Sir Lancelot, Sir Gawain, Sir Galahad, Circumference. They were all there. All right. Sir. So, more questions. Ivan. Hi, dear Richard. Undoubtedly, you are the master. Is the is the following sentence correct? Pongamos bien la sintaxis, eh? Is the following sentence correct? Not is correct. If you had been in my shoes, comma, pon la coma, you would have done the same. That's correct. That's perfect. If you had been in my shoes, comma, you would have done the same. All right. Very good. More. Rafa. Hello, Richard. I am here today by chance. Falta la en chance. I just want to thank you. Mm. Al escribir, al poner one as is con tu amiguete de la, de, de, de la casa de la. Pero want to. When you write, write in correct English. I just want to thank you very much for such a useful class. As always, comma, you rock. Greetings from Montevideo, Uruguay. You're a guay. I'm a guay. He's a guay. Everybody's a guay here. And you're a guay too. All right. Useful, empiezo por la, un, un, un boca, la, la vocal, la U, pero es una U larga que tiene sonido Y. Entonces, se pone A delante de sonidos de consonante. Y se pone AN delante de sonidos de vocal. Y useful es sonido de vocal. A useful class. A university. A unicorn. A European problem. European, e -u -e europeo, European, por suena y griega que es consonante. A, a useful, a, such a useful class. You, as always, you rock, rock, rock. Greetings from Montevideo. I've never been to Montevideo. That's my next trip. 
And Luis, Caro, thank you very much, uh, Rafa. It's a real pleasure. Luis Caro, thank you. Thank you. Marie Jose, thank you. A lot of you are very thankful people here. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Más os vale, eh? O más les vale a ustedes. You'd better be thankful because this is a free class. I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a free class. So you'd better, you had better. You had better is más vale que, ojo. Had better, a veces se traduce como debería. You'd better study more. Deberías estudiar más, pero no es así. Deberías estudiar más is you should study more. You should. Deberías es una recomendación. Suge una sugerencia. In my opinion, you should study more. Now, you had better study more is una amenaza. Had better is una amenaza. It's a threat. You'd better. For example, you remember the child? You'd better watch out. You'd better not cry. You'd better not shout or pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. So, you know, in Christmas time, Santa Claus comes and leaves presents under the tree. But if you have been a bad boy or a bad girl, well, he doesn't. He brings carbon coal, or he brings switches. All right. And so the song is, you'd better watch out. You'd better not cry. You'd better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list and checking it twice. He's going to make sure who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sakes. Por Dios. Que sea bueno. Que sea bueno. You'd better watch out. Más vale que tengas cuidado. Watch out is the same. Be careful. Watch out. You'd, you had better. You'd better watch out. You'd better not cry. Más vale que no, que no llores. You better not pout. P-O-U-T, pout. Como out, fuera, con P delante. Pout is hacer pucheros. <laughs> you better not pout. I'm telling you why, etc. So you'd better. You'd better. So, Dennis. Dennis Bauta, thanks for everything you do for teaching English. English con E mayúscula, por favor. Siempre, I repeat again and again, capitalize the names of the nationalities or the names of the languages. A Brazilian I don't know, Brazilian dance form. Brazilian with a capital B. All right. Dennis, figure out. What's the meaning? Figure out is saber. O es llegar a, con, llegar a conocer o saber. I can't figure out. I can't figure out whether, I can't figure out if he's angry or worried. No sé, le veo. And I can't figure out. A, a ver, no saco con, conclusión de si, que está, si está enfadado o está preocupado. I can't figure it out. Y esta situación no, no, no le hago ni pies ni cabeza. I can't figure out what the problem is. ¿Por qué estás tan enfadado? What's the problem? I can't figure out, I can't figure out what's wrong. I can't figure out means I cannot calculate and reach a conclusion. Yeah. No llego a saber, no llego a, a entender. I can't figure out. I can't figure out what the problem is. So, figure... The British say figure, figure. Figure means figura, o sea, la, la, the person. Figure also means las cifras. O sea, numéricas. De ahí viene la palabra figure out. Es calcular, to figure out. Figure skating. Patinaje artístico, we say figure skating. And the British say figure skating. Figure skating. So figure out, that's the meaning. I can't figure out whether, well, you know, I can't figure out why it takes you people so long to learn English. I mean, come on, querer es poder. Where there's a will, there's a way. Donde pones el ojo, tienes que poner la bala. What's the problem? I can't figure out what the problem is. No doy con lo, no doy con lo que es el problema aquí. I can't figure it out. No, no, no. Pienso en ello de mil maneras y no doy con la, con la respuesta. I can't figure out what the, what the uh, answer is. Don Francisco, Javier, thank you. In advance... ND, no sé, I don't know what it means. You know what ND means? I don't know. Up front is this, well, no, no, up front is different. You're asking me, ahora estamos rizando, riza, estamos buscando. Uh, up front means por, an, por adelantado cuando pagas. Pagas a up front. I'll, I'll pay you up front. Up front. It's like, I'll pay you in advance. It's, 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 it's correct, up front. It's, it's the same in most cases. 
in most cases the same, por adelantado. For example, uh, this car is uh, up front. Okay, yeah, but that's in colloquial language. Pay 2,000 up front, and then we say a down payment. Down, como abajo y pago abajo. Down payment means la entrada. Para, paga, para comprar el coche, pagas una entrada de $2,000, dólares, y luego cada mes, X. All right, you pay. The down payment is $2,000, and then monthly installments for the next 36 months. All right, so, but colloquially, when we're speaking, you say, okay, pay $2,000 up front, in advance. Well, in advance, no, up front. Because in advance is por anticipado. Up front means ahora mismo, bam, y luego hablamos. Y luego, plazos de pago posteriores. Installments. Subsequent installments. Okay. It's important to talk with the glottal stop. I don't know what the glottal stop is. In English, for example, curtain and... Cur curtain. Ah, curtain. Well, don't worry about that. A cotton, button, curtain. This is American English and maybe British as well. But the British have a different way. For example, my button, this button, is made of cotton. Este botón está hecho de algodón. Los americanos diríamos, it's a cotton button. It's a cotton button. And I think the British, oh, it's a cotton button. Cotton button. I, I really don't know. But standard English, it's a cotton button. And I recommend you stay in the standard. Don't try to emulate native pronunciation unless you have an extremely high level, close to native level. Cotton button, cotton candy, yes, algodón, dulce, cotton candy, cotton button, cotton. So don't worry about that, Francisco. Javier, it's important to talk with, no, it's not important. It's important to understand it, yes. I only use shirts with cotton buttons. I only wear shirts with cotton buttons. With what, with cotton buttons? Don't your shirts have cotton buttons? My shirts have cotton buttons. Mis, todos mis camisas tienen algo, botones de algodón. All right. But the best is say, oh, yes, my shirt is co a cotton button. A cotton button. All right. That's the best way. Next. Huh? Lola. Lola. <laughs> my last comment. Okay. I would say final. Last position is el último que he oído. My last comment was incorrect. My... My final comment, okay, I promise. It's a secret, Richard. You and me are the same age. Wow. Wow. Can you believe it? Wow. Can you believe I still continue to improve my English? I still continue improving my English? Well, of course. Nunca, nunca estar en si la dicha es buena. You're never too old to uh, achieve incredible things. I mean, really. You're never too old. So, Lola, it's a real pleasure. I was born in the month of November. And you? I was born on November 9th. In this city, they celebrate my birthday with a holiday. Yeah, it's always a holiday. Every November 9th, it's a holiday in this, in this city. Because the second patron saint, Santo Patron, La Almudena, is uh, celebrated on November 9th. So, this city has two patron saints. Can you believe it? I mean, Houston, Texas doesn't have any. El caso es tener motivos de fiesta, no? Festivos. Of, and so, they have... There are three. There's the, for the community or the province of Madrid, there's a, fest, a festival, a, a, a holiday. For the San Isidro, the male patron saint, there's a holiday. And for the female, La Modena, there's a, there's a, so there are three holidays eh, that we don't have in my country. Okay, Reme, Remedios, Remedios La Bella. That's from Cien Años de Soledad. Good afternoon. My question is, which, what's the difference? What's the difference? Nunca se dice which is the difference. Nunca se dice la expresión which is the difference. Siempre es what's. What is the difference in meaning between? She's popular by sending something. She's popular for sending. Well, you see, the sentence I don't really understand. Ella es popular por motivo de haber enviado algo. She's popular by, no, for. She's popular for her good basketball skills. skills. She's popular because... She is popular because she is very pretty. Okay, she is popular for her beauty, not by her beauty, for her beauty. 
Oh, es popular ella porque juega, es la mejor jugadora de baloncesto o basketball, basket del, del colegio. Okay, she's popular because she's the best basketball player. She's popular for her basketball skills, not by. All right. Reme, so that's it. I like your picture. Yeah. I wish I could see it in bigger. All right. Yes. Silvia, dear dear Vaughn, you know, dear Richard, mejor. ¿Cómo se dice preocupación en inglés? Worry. Concern. Both. Don't worry, be happy. Worry. My worries. Mis preocupaciones, my worries. Mis preocupaciones, my concerns. I'm going to live a different here. Really. To worry, or or my my worry, mi preocupación, means I suffer a certain degree of anxiety. Ansiedad. Concern doesn't imply anxiety. For example, oh, my my daughter is in the hospital. I'm really worried. Okay. Concerned is also correct. But for example, uh, the proper training of the people in this company is a concern for me. All right. La buena formación del personal de esta empresa es una preocupación continua en mi labor de dirección de, empresa, de esta empresa. No estoy perdiendo sueño con ansiedad incontrolable. Worry, también. Wor to worry implica ansiedad. To worry is a negative verb. Nobody likes to worry. But we all need to be concerned about certain things. We need to be concerned about our future. We need to be concerned about our children's future. We need to be concerned about our job and our responsibilities. Perhaps we need, we need to be concerned about climate change, for example. But worried means maybe the world is going to end in five years. Then you become worried. So concerned means la mente se ocupa de ello porque es necesario. Worried means you're biting your nails, maybe. Okay. Sorry, go on. No two. I, I, I would have to see the previous one. I go, I'm, no. I'm going on 67. I'm going on 67 in a, in a few days. No. In a few days, no. I'm going on 67. In a few days, it's not, it's not, I'm going on, I'm going on 67. Now, I will be 67 in a few days. But if you say I'm going on, don't say in a few days. Now you're 16 going on 17. All right. Candora. That's an interesting name. Or Candora. I think it's Candora. Hi, Mr. Richard. It's a pleasure to listen to you as always. I hope you can give us more online classes in the, ne in the near future. No se dice next future. In English, no existe la expresión del próximo futuro. Se dice en el cercano. Futuro, eh? In the near future. Near. Okay? What would suggest well, what would suggest to prepare a business meeting in English to avoid seeing? What would you suggest for preparing a business meeting in English to avoid serious mistakes and misunderstandings? Two things. Number one, be prepared. Know your subject. It's not a language question here. The only language question is to understand perfectly. And know your subject. And be confident with your subject. And be convinced. The convictions you have concerning the subject. And the knowledge of the subject is more important than the language question. But you must understand. You can speak with broken English and still manage to conduct the meeting. Or at least to participate effectively in the meeting with imperfect English. But you need a perfect ear and you need to know your subject very, very well. Don't worry about the rest. Don't worry too much. It's counterproductive. All right. Antonio Arroyo. Antonio, your voice is similar to David Boy's? Boy's? I like it. Well, David Boy, I think, is he's, a, he's Irish, isn't he? Or English. No English. He's English. And I don't speak like the... I, 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 say, I can't speak like the English people. I can't emulate the British accent. Uh, but thank you. My voice is... Uh, my voice sounds better on the radio than on television. But in any case, uh, thank you very much. Uh, but I have to listen to David Bowie, Bowie and listen to his speech to see if it's, <laughs> if it's similar. Uh, we are here. Okay. Sounds good. So, we have only five minutes left. Can we compress a lot of English 
a lot of productivity into only five minutes. Como hacer que el tiempo cunda. How to make time beneficial. How to make time, how to gain a strong return on our investment in time. In only five minutes, then I recommend that you remember the solar system that I spoke about earlier. Earlier, anteriormente, earlier. And remember, closer to, farther from. It takes less time to go around. It takes more time. Not as close to, not as far from. And each planet is named after. Tiene nombre en honor a. Is named, Washington, D.C. is named after George Washington. Lincoln, Nebraska is named after Abraham Lincoln. Tiene su nombre en honor a Abraham Lincoln. It's named after Paris, Paris. That's not true. Is named after the uh, the son of Priam, uh, the younger brother of of Hector in Troy. But uh, Paris comes from the Parisi tribe that lived in that area uh, when Julius Caesar was subjugating the the Gauls to the will of Rome. Yes, sometiéndolos a la voluntad de Roma. In las guerras de las Galias, la guerra de las Galias, in the in Gaul, it's interesting that he, in Spanish they say las Galias, in English we Gaul, Gaula. It's interesting, Gaul. However, there's a very famous sh novel of chivalry called Chivalry called Amadis de Gaula, no Amadis de las Galias. And so, I interesting things I don't understand completely that I can't figure out. But in any case, to um, thank you for the fact that my voice is similar, Antonio. Now. Use the solar system. Closer to, farther from. Closer to, farther from. Comes after. Venus comes after. Venus comes after uh, Mercury. The Earth, com the Earth comes after Venus. Mars comes after the Earth. Jupiter comes after Mars, etc., etc. Jupiter is bigger than Mars. Mars is smaller than Jupiter. Jupiter isn't as small as Mars. Mars isn't as big as Jupiter. Mars is closer to the sun than Jupiter. So Jupiter is farther from the sun than Mars. Jupiter isn't as close to the sun as Mars, and Mars isn't as far from the sun <laughs> as a... But you can play with grammar with the solar system in many different ways and the time it takes each planet to go around the sun. And then the planets are named after. They come after. They come before. They come between. Jupiter comes after Mars, and it comes before Saturn. Saturn comes after Jupiter. It takes Saturn longer to go around the sun than it takes Jupiter. It doesn't take Jupiter as long. It doesn't take Jupiter as long to go around the sun as Saturn. It's in la mecánica gramatical de idioma. Dominar la mecánica es dominar el sistema, el sistema motor del idioma. Y puedes hablar inglés como puedes trepar un árbol. Con la osamente musculatura y tendones y ligamentos y, y las articulaciones. ¡Vum! Y en eso está la base gramatical, la parte aparentemente sencillo del idioma, sencillo del idioma, tener una agilidad bárbara con, con esa parte. Uno ya tiene el 90% del inglés hablado conseguido. Pero hay un 8 10% que es más avanzado, pero se usa poco. So, and then, of course, uh, you must understand everything. And with that, time's up. This party is over for now, but I'll be back. I'll be back next Monday. The following Monday, the 23rd of September, I will be in Peru. I'll be in Lima. So perhaps we'll find another day. Or perhaps we'll just skip that week. Who knows? We can, we can talk about it next week, okay? What should we do with the 23rd of... Uh, we could do it on Sunday, the 22nd, if you want to have a Sunday class. Or we could do it on Saturday, the 21st. Why not? Or Friday the 20th. Maybe Friday the 20th. I'll talk to, to Rob, this guy over here whom you can't see. I'll talk to him and, and we'll, uh, we'll make a decision. Or take a decision. You could say both. But I think the expression make is... By the end of the century, I think take a decision will be gone. Because we say the decision-making process. We're going to say the decision-taking process. Oh, he's a good decision-maker. Sounds funny to say he's a good decision-taker. But the British often say to take a decision. Oh, I'm going to take a decision on this. And uh, Americans say we're going to make a decision. I think make is going to prevail. But who knows? It really doesn't matter. 
So have a great, what's today? Monday? Have a great Monday. Make it a productive Monday. Que cunda mucho el día. And uh, I'll see you again next Monday. Take care.